many pundits think they've got Charlie Baker pegged. As governor, they say he'll be fiscally conservative and socially moderate. But what that means in practice is unclear, especially when it comes to immigration. During the campaign, Baker walked a political tightrope on the issue. In part one of our Focus report, Adam Riley reports that both sides of the immigration debate now see Baker as a potential ally. It was a telling moment in the 2014 campaign. When Governor Deval Patrick agreed to house young immigrants crossing the border illegally, Charlie Baker backed him and took a beating from the right. He's a Republican in name only. He's an establishment Republican. He doesn't have any core Republican convictions. That's WRKO host Jeff Cooner. Howie Carr was equally harsh, warning, you can't get elected by trying to out-moombat the moonbats. But Baker did get elected, and now some liberals hope they can find common ground with him on illegal immigration. We have or are close to having two unfilled jobs for every one unemployed person in Massachusetts. So there's a huge talent gap that's really stymieing our economy right now. So I'm hopeful that uh, Governor-elect Baker will be cognizant of that. Democratic State Senator Sonia Chang-Diaz thinks there's an economic and a moral case for more liberal immigration policies and hopes Baker follows Patrick's lead. Governor Patrick has been a phenomenal uh, voice uh, on issues of immigration. He's someone who has, I think, really understood at a visceral level the contributions that immigrant um, small business owners, students, workers make to the state. Those are big shoes to fill. I'm hopeful that we'll see that from our next governor. During his first run for governor, Baker struck a more conservative note, enthusiastically backing the federal Secure Communities program and opposing in-state tuition for undocumented immigrants. But Chang Diaz says Baker's stance on those unaccompanied minors shows he's grown. There was a lot of uh, irresponsible rhetoric uh, from opponents of, of that policy, and it, it's a sign of hope for me that um, candidate Baker did not engage in that. But Baker sent other messages in the campaign. He made headlines by skipping a forum dedicated to immigrant issues. And he bluntly opposed letting undocumented immigrants get driver's licenses. And the main reason for that uh, is no one's ever been able to explain to me how you can actually document and verify someone who is undocumented. Moments like that encouraged people on the other side of the immigration debate, like Republican State Representative Shauna O'Connell. I think Governor-elect Baker is an ally for the people of Massachusetts. As O'Connell sees it, that means moving away from Governor Patrick's legacy. We need to stop making Massachusetts a magnet for illegal immigration and start following the laws like secure communities, like ensuring that people have proper identification when they want to register vehicles or get a driver's license so that we are keeping our communities secure. And while liberals hope Baker will emulate Patrick, O'Connell says she's sure there will be no comparison. He's going to be a lot tougher on illegal immigration than Governor Patrick has been. Unless, of course, he isn't. And if Baker surprises, it won't be the first time. Anyone hoping that Baker might move left on immigration got some good news over the weekend when a Baker spokesman said that in response to the president's executive mm -hmm. order, he might rethink his position on driver's licenses. That's a possible shift that's already uh, making people angry over the conservative blog Red Mask Group. Of course, the uh, campaign and now his staff, the transition team, is saying he's been consistent, that nothing has really changed since his positions in 2010. Is that true? Uh, you know, he hasn't done a 180, I wouldn't say that you can point to, but what he has done is evolved, to use a political catchphrase, with a lot of help from the federal government. Think of the group of students, that are the so-called DACA students, that were given mm -hmm. the right to get work permits yep. to stick around here back in 2012. After President Obama uh, gave them that right, Deval Patrick, uh, the current governor, issued an executive order saying that they could then participate in or get benefit from in-state uh, tuition at Massachusetts colleges and universities. And then Baker in the 2014 campaign basically said, mm -hmm. I agree with Governor Patrick. Because this group now has the right to work here after they graduate, I'm okay with them getting in-state so tuition. So it's a natural evolution, but it is an evolution. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Adam Riley, thanks for that. Thanks, everyone. Well, for more on this evolving situation, let's bring in Julio Ricardo Varela. He is founder of LatinoRebels.com, an independent media company focused on the U.S. Latino world. Welcome to you, Julio. Hi, Emily. How are you? So have you noticed much of a change? You know, the people are saying, well, this is evolving, and as laws change and as the president makes statements, it's natural to move with those. But... Is there a, a flip-flop here or anything? I don't think it's a flip-flop. I think Governor Lake Baker is really taking the stance of, of evolving, and I think he, he shows 
interest in trying to change that position. I think with the with the recent you know news that someone like Scott Brown lost in, in New Hampshire with a very extreme position on immigration, kind of signifies to me that. I think Massachusetts and New England in general is a little bit more moderate than you see from the Jeff Cooners and the Howie Cars and the Scott Browns yeah. of the world. And so when you have places like Vermont and Connecticut already issuing you know, und licenses for undocumented individuals, you would think that Massachusetts would kind of follow that lead. On the flip side, you know, even with Governor Patrick being a voice of mm -hmm. the immigrant community, not much has happened in the state house in the last seven years in terms of leadership and legislation. So. I, I would think it's an opportunity for Governor Baker to, to to sort of, you know, work together in a bipartisan way and kind of be sort of that unique Republican that might go against the grain of what you might hear from the national, you know, in the next couple of years. Uh, you brought up the issue of driver's licenses. Will he become an advocate for that? Because as you could hear from the piece during the campaign and during the debates, he was strictly against it and he said why. But might he change the tune, his tune now that... Uh, the, the Obama administration has made changes in the, the, the status of many people who were undocumented. Right. I think the executive action by President Obama is going to force Gov Governor-elect Baker into, into taking a position. I think when he's saying that, I don't know how to document people, that's kind of a little bit misleading because, you know, you might not have a citizenship card or a passport, but you have, you know, birth certificates, country of origin. So when you look at other states like Utah, um, New Mexico, you look at, at places like Florida that are using in-state tuition and even in other places around the country. It's not like this is some radical idea that's, that's hap that you know, all of a sudden is happening. And I also think that Governor, Governor like Baker understands that Massachusetts is changing, and this could be an opportunity for him, again, to, exactly. to reach out to a new demographic. I mean, there's staggering statistics if they're right, right up to 150,000 people in Massachusetts alone. Right. I mean, and we pointed out that uh, Governor Deval Patrick was, he, he, he reached out to the immigrant community regardless of their status. Right. And this is, this is a constituency that Charlie Baker's not going to be able to ignore. He can't. I mean, and, you know, when you talk about, you know, estimates of 150,000, 185,000, but also the fact that when you look at national polls, you have, you know, Latino families or, or families that, that know people who are undocumented. So it, it's actually an issue that, that whether you like it or not, it, it really is in the soul of the Latino community, both in Massachusetts and, and in the United States. But the question is, at least in Massachusetts, the immigrant advocate community hasn't matured yet, and I, I do think that this is an opportunity for, for leaders such as Governor like Baker or even Senator um, Cheng Diaz to sort of take the lead on this. You know, some people want Charlie Baker to crack down on these so-called sanctuary cities right. like uh, Cambridge and Chelsea that don't go along with secure communities, yet he just picked Jay Ash from right. Chelsea to be uh, in, one of his, in one of his cabinet posts, and it would suggest that he, not, not that necessarily embraces it, embraces that, but he's not resisting it. No, I don't think he is, and I think it was very smart strategy on Governor Lech Baker to win the election. I think one of the things that people don't talk about a lot is that he kind of neutralized mm -hmm. sort of that outreach with with um, with Martha Coakley, and just enough to win the election. And and by having you know Martha Coakley not take very clear positions on immigration, almost like she was a little bit more conservative than Governor Patrick. I think the Baker camp saw that as an opportunity, and, and I do think they are reaching out. Now we'll see what happens. Um, you know, the recent comments that were made last week by his spokesman um, could give some hope. Uh, but he hasn't tapped you yet, has he? For <laughs> no one has tapped me yet. <laughs> no one has tapped me. Because right now, he's, so far, there have, I don't think yet, there hasn't been any from the Latino community. No, not at all. And that's a serious issue. That is definitely a serious, especially in Massachusetts. I'm sure they're looking. I'm sure they are. And I, you know, I hope, I hope the Baker campaign understands that, that, you know, we're here mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's something that matters. And it's, it's an issue that, like I said, it, it, people are affected by this. And, and it's part of the economy. And so this extreme talk is really a small minority. They, they just seem to be screaming louder. And I, mm. I, do, I do commend Governor-elect Baker for, for kind of taking the high road, not only here in Massachusetts, but with, in, with national Republicans as well. All right. Julio, Ricardo, Varela, thank you so much for thank coming. Thank you very much.